I've been wishing for some better days Could you listen, no way? Can you stay? I write love your songs for a day In his own mind, but it don't matter He's got more time for the lover to arrive If he's still alive, he could be revived But he's dead inside And he's satisfied What a lovely lie That he left and said goodnight Whoa, whoa, whoa Whoa, whoa, whoa Whoa, 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 whoa. That man's wonderland One word, the name's transit. Now transit is a word slash name that can elicit a very emotional response. Some people can respond with rage while others respond with nostalgia. Simple word is nostalgia. This map has had some of the most controversial changes in zombies history. From having no wall buys in one of the most populated parts of the map, Things like the denizens that rip your eyes out when you're running through the fog, and don't get me started on that fog, that blocks out half the map and makes it nearly impossible for you to see three feet in front of your eyes. Transit is an interesting case. See, when the map was first announced, people were excited. This map had the potential to be one of the most innovative and new feeling zombies maps in the entire franchise. Coming out of something like Moon, one of the most divisive maps in the history of the franchise and one of the greatest endings to a story, a new chapter was opened. But how would Treyarch take this new chapter? Well, many people thought that it was going to be a new innovative era for zombies, while others were worried. But when the map hit on launch day, a whole new feeling arose from people going around after completing the main Easter egg and wondering, where is the rest? There's got to be more. But unfortunately, there wasn't. What you got was what you got. Everything that was present on launch day is all that there was. Nothing more, nothing less. With a lack of content, some irritating new features, and just an overall sense of being cheated by the developers, we were given something that did nothing but irritate us. Now we know why Transit is bad, and we know why Transit is what, probably one of the worst maps in history, if not the worst going to be taking a look at some of the things that make transit an interesting map and some of the things that can be viewed as good in, in my opinion and some of the things that make it a map worth going back to play and some of the things that could have been changed or improved uh, to make it a better map and some of the things that are behind why the map fell so short so sit back relax and enjoy I've been wishing for some Days. Number one, the duality between Maxis and Richtofen. Now, after coming out of Moon, one of the greatest climaxes in the entirety of Zombies history, we blew up the Earth. This was absolutely profound, and people were excited to see what was next. When you first load into transit, the, some of the first things you hear are Dr. Maxis, that familiar voice talking through a radio, communicating to our Victus crew. Now this element of him returning, talking through electronics, wasn't something to be super surprised about, but he's talking more directly to the player this time. Instead of hearing him in a radio or telling you to help him prevent Richtofen's evil ways by blowing up the earth, he's speaking directly to you almost as he's your boss or above you which is interesting because we've never really we, we had never really seen anything like this so this was an interesting thing so okay quick into the map already hearing max is interesting later down the line if you're playing as someone like Stuhlinger you start to hear that familiar voice of our favorite German Dr. Edward Richthofen from the Ultimus crew speaking to you as if you are his servant, his humble guide, or his vessel. And he's telling you to work against Maxis. Now this duality between Richtofen and Maxis is something that's always been present in the zombie storyline, but we had never really seen it come this involved with the player. We had never seen Richtofen and Maxis battling over the control of the players. And sometimes, honestly, if you're a new player and you're wanting to do the Easter egg, sometimes 
hearing each side kind of makes you want to choose. It gives you that, who, who do I go with? Who's the best choice? Well, Max sounds like a good guy. Richthofen kind of sounds like a crazy, erotic German. Maybe I don't want to trust him. Maybe I want to go with Maxis, or maybe I want to go with Richthofen. He sounds cooler than this random guy talking to me through a radio. So this was one thing that I will say that Transit did really well, was that expanding the conflict between Richthofen and Maxis and making it feel like more that the player had choice. Because in Black Ops 1, you were siding with Richthofen. You were going along with this grand scheme. You didn't really have a choice. Sure, you could choose not to do the Easter egg, but there was really nothing to do except survive. Now they're giving the player an actual choice. Who do I go with here? Who do I want to advance? And this is going to culminate in Buried, of course. We all know this. And that was that first step. And it was it was a really interesting dynamic. Now you can you can argue that the final payoff wasn't as great as people had had wanted, but at least they were trying to give the the player's choice and make them feel more involved in the in the story. It's one thing that Transit did did well. And I got it. I got to admit. It's probably one of the most interesting things about the whole Victus storyline is is getting the dynamic between Maxis and Richthofen playing with the characters and using them almost as puppets or vessels for them. It's, it's a really interesting dynamic and honestly, one of my favorite things about Black Ops 2. Now let's talk about the gameplay of Transit. Now we all know the irritating things about Transit, the bus, the denizens, the fog, the lava, the exploder zombies, we all know it, we all hate it. But Transit has an interesting gameplay. So the setting of the map is a broken down town in Washington state, devastated by government experiments and the rockets that hit the earth, and barren in a just desolate wasteland. And the gameplay is kind of like that too. It's bare, it's bare bones, you have your f main perks, you have guns off the wall, and you have the box. That's about it. The jet gun, that's a whole nother story. It's a, one of the worst wonder weapons ever devised. You have to build it, you have to go around the whole map and scour for parts. The whole feel of the gameplay is just desperate and desolate. There's not much to it. Now, you can say, well, that's a bad thing because it gives the player less choice and less wanting to actually play the map compared to a map like Buried where you have so many new features or origins for that matter but i feel like the gameplay of transit fits transit having a dull gameplay where it kind of harkens back to the original parts of zombies bare bones you have your normal perks buy guns off the wall and get pack a punch that's it there's not much to do if you want to go for the easter egg that's the next step which kind of is a refresher in my opinion it started black ops 2 off and almost something that harkened back to the old ways but int introduced some new things you know, the concept of buildables and the bus. The gameplay of Transit truly fits Transit. There's not much to it. It's a desolate wasteland with dull gameplay. And sure, saying the word dull sounds bad, but I don't see it that way. I feel like if there was more side quests or more better buildables for that matter, things like the zombie shield and the turbine were interesting, and the turret is just one of the worst buildables ever. Like, who actually goes and builds that? Literally fucking no one. No one builds it. So I feel like if there were more meaningful buildables, and that if the gameplay was just a little bit more rewarding, that risk and reward type feeling that things like Buried in Origins give you, where it's, I'm going to go on this mini quest and get one of the best wonder weapons ever. If that was more present in Transit, it would make the gameplay so much better. Forget about the fog, forget about the denizens, forget about the lava. If they would have just fixed and added more things to the core gameplay features, the map would have been great. It would have made up things that people don't like. Because you look at a map like Zetsubo and Oshima. You know, when it came out, it was one of the most, I would say, one of the most hated maps ever. But, over time, and people playing the map more and more, it felt a little bit more rewarding. Yes, the setup is tedious, but when you finally get set up, it almost makes you forget about the struggle before. It makes you forget about the things that annoy you in the map. When you get the Masa Moon, the upgraded KT4, and you fight against the Thrashers, they're not really a competition anymore because it just destroys them. So it makes up for the for the annoying factors of the gameplay, where Transit doesn't do that. The gameplay almost just sits to the side while you have to deal with all these annoying core gameplay features. So it's kind of frustrating. So if they would have just added more of a way to cope with those negative things about the gameplay that make the player's journey harder, the map would have been a lot better. 
but unfortunately they didn't. And then another thing about the gameplay is the new perk that was introduced, one of the most infamous perks in Call of Duty Zombies history, Tombstone, also rated one of the worst perks in Zombies history. Now the perk isn't inherently bad, sure it doesn't promote teamwork, just like, oh, I'm not going to wait for my friend to revive me. I'm just going to kill myself and have my loadout when I spawn back in and let my team teammates suffer. So it's unfortunate that something like this, a, a good idea, I should say. It was a good idea at heart. Having you be the ability to keep your loadout and things like that after you die is a great concept, but it just doesn't promote teamwork. Now, the perk just does not fit with transit, unfortunately. Even the main purpose of the of the perk is just so hindered by the gameplay when you die in transit and you hit that tombstone ability to feed the zombies that tombstone can be on the other side of the map and by the time you get there it might not even be there which is unfortunate so the perk just doesn't fit the map if that perk was on any other map like you look at town town survival works so well on that map if it were on any other map i guarantee you that tombstone soda would be a more popular perk than it is but it's not. It just doesn't fit with Transit, unfortunately. So, overall, Tombstone doesn't fit the map, and the gameplay just doesn't have that reward. So, although it's simple and harkens back to the original things that made Zombies so fun, it, it just it does not make up for the struggles of the gameplay. So that is one reason why the gameplay suffers so much in Transit, and if they would have just added more risk and reward, a better wonder weapon maybe, or just more better buildables, the map would have been a lot better. So the third main thing about Transit that I feel like people talk about the most is the Victus crew. Russman, Stulinger, Marlton, and Misty. The main crew from Transit, Die Rise, Buried, and Togder Toten. Now this crew when it first came out was not well liked at all. And it still in some ways is not very uh, likable I guess to most people. But I feel like that was kind of unfair when they came out. I mean you come from one of the greatest and most memorable group of characters, Nikolai, Dempsey, Takio and Richtofen, you know, one of the most likable group of characters we've ever experienced in a video game, and you come to a new group of characters here just introduced to, you're not going to like them as much, unfortunately, and there's nothing you can really do to prevent that. Now, do I feel like over time they become more likable and people have enjoy, enjoy them a lot more? Yes, especially after the ending of Togger Toten. It gives them more, um, more emotion associated with them because you feel bad for them. They kind of got fucked over in the end because they kind of just, they didn't really get what they expected out of it. They finally thought Thought they'd be free and they they just kind of got erased they aren't bad characters and i personally kind of enjoy them especially russman russman is just great and i don't feel like it was fair to hate on them as much i don't see really any negative thing about them sure marlton is annoying but you also have to remember that takio was not well liked for the longest time it wasn't really until origins came out and you got the premise crew that people started to actually like takio because he was just this cartoony japanese soldier who is all about honor and dignity that was it there wasn't much to him marlton is just kind of a a nerd you know and he's, he's sometimes can be annoying to some people so i feel like them being hated on that much was just kind of unfortunate and i feel like they're they're interesting because you know the player can more more or less relate to them more i mean they're just people they're just normal people who haven't been on this grand journey or haven't been through anything yet in transit they're just survivors where you have the ultimus and the primus crew where these almost uh stoic characters especially primus with the whole great war lore and everything with that it, they just have more of a grandiose uh vibe to them where the transit crew is just a bunch of normal people you know russman's just an old dude stillinger's just a weirdo trying to survive marlton's a nerd and misty's just a farm girl and you know that's really all all they are and you can say well that kind of makes them you know boring they're not a oh, cartoony they're not grand and i feel like that's kind of unfair because that's not what they tried to make them to be i feel like it's more refreshing when you have groups of people in zombies that are different you know like the mobster group from mob of the dead you know they were interesting because we'd never seen really a group like that you know mobsters from alcatraz it's just badass or the you know crew from call of the dead just a bunch of actors and plus you had danny trejo and and rooker in there it was just it was great but transit just their crew just get forgotten a lot and it's unfortunate because i feel like when they 
came out it was a new and interesting type of character to have in the storyline because we just never seen anything like that and we really haven't seen anything like that since i mean i guess you could say shadows of evil but we didn't get that much time spent with them and it's harder to relate to people that are from the 1920s unfortunately life's a little bit different but you know these people that we see in transit are more or less people that you could see today in the modern day i don't know i feel like the transit crew just got the short end of the stick by the zombies community and, and should have been looked at differently and i feel like that they have gotten more love and support recently in recent years i feel like they were a, a good fit for the map and a good fit for that storyline so i'm going to give a plus for the uh, victus crew i think they were a good part of the map i've been wishing for some now let's get a little bit theoretical, I guess, and talk about the things that transit could have been. From an interview with Jason Lundell a couple years ago, he talked about how transit, when it was being developed, had a variety of new modes to it. That the whole concept of transit was was very innovative and very adventurous for zombies. There had never been a form of zombies with modes like this. You know, you had grief and turned, which we got in the final product, but there were other things like that were talked about, like uh, capture the meat and things like that. So it was a new innovative way to involve the zombies player base because i feel like by the time transit had come around we had seen the same things over and over again sure we got new equipment new weapons new perks but we had never seen new ways to play zombies it was always we're at a new place we're on the moon we're in shangri-la we're in ascension you know just new places it wasn't you know now you're playing as a zombie or now you're playing against other people you're fighting against other people there never been anything like that so that was one thing that was really interesting now you can say that those modes aren't good or that they weren't as interesting that that's kind of a different argument that's not really what i'm going for i'm going for innovation in, in how these things were new um and we haven't really seen much like that since so i feel like the modes in black ops 2 that they were going for were, was was interesting and, and, and pretty at that time it was kind of adventurous the other things about transit that were kind of interesting was the fact that they tried to change the gameplay you know moving around having a moving uh, an object that moved the player like the bus was kind of different because you know you had the lunar landers but they weren't they weren't as much as a main factor in the movement around the map you could play a whole game of ascension and the only time you used the lunar landers was to open pack a bunch that was literally it like when i play ascension i rarely use those things i'm gonna be real honest the, the bus was just kind of something to focus around, which was different. We had never seen anything like that. The only really bad thing about Transit and its innovation and its aspects that it wanted to go for is that it, and it looked too much to the stars. It was trying to be so much that in the end they just couldn't provide all of that in the time that they had. And it's unfortunate because I feel like if they would have gotten the full picture of what they wanted Transit to be, Transit could have been a fantastic map. Now I don't really blame them, you know, wanting to make a great experience. They, it's not really their fault. They have deadlines and unfortunately they just couldn't deliver what they wanted to deliver in the time that they had. It's unfortunate but it's it's what happened. Now the map did suffer from this and that's, that is the reason why the map suffers so much and is this liked so much is because of how much the gameplay and the core mechanics of the map suffered because of this. They just didn't add the risk and reward that they may have wanted to and just didn't add everything that could have made the map so much better and made up for the lackluster gameplay that we see that people don't enjoy and made those aspects like the Avogadro, the Denizens, the Fog, and the Lava so much you could cope with that more they just didn't weren't able to add those things so it's unfortunate as much as the map was trying to be new innovative and adventurous it just couldn't deliver in the time that they had I've been wishing for some now let's talk about something a little bit different about transit not really focusing on the the gameplay or, or the, the, the characters or the story let's focus on the player reception now when the map first came out, the majority of the zombies community, you know, hated it, and they still hate it. Every time I see a, a tier list, trans put at the bottom. Now, I'm not saying that's wrong, or that that's not correct, or it should be higher. I'm not saying that, because, you know, I, I understand. But let's talk about something else, nostalgia. Now, nostalgia can be a good thing, it can be a bad thing. You know, those rose-tinted glasses. That but Transit's a weird map. You know, people love the map. Parts of the community love the map for some reason. Whether it's because, oh, this was my childhood or this was the first map I played. You know, I met some of my favorite online friends through playing Black Ops 2, through playing maps like Transit. It, it, it's, it's a feel-good uh, feeling, I guess. You know, it just makes you happy and miss those times. And, and you know, I, I go back and I play Transit on PC now, and it's like... It's still 
fun to play with randoms it's fun to play with people you've never met and just experience that map over again it you know it kind of feels like the first time i guess just remembering all the fun times you had and all the matches you played staying up till 6 a.m playing transit it's just it's a good feeling and i feel like over time that nostalgia has had has has had a good effect on transit's view in the community because i i go on videos and i people breaking down transit or talking about zombies and just being like transit wasn't that bad you know i miss these days i miss black ops 2 i miss going back and playing transit with my friends people had good experiences and i feel like that's a good thing for transit you know other things that might hold nostalgia might ruin them in a way by just like oh this isn't as good as i remember or um, just not meeting up to your expectations. I feel like that hasn't had that effect on transit. I rarely see people go back and say, you know what, I used to like this map, now I hate it. I never see that. I see people talking about how much they miss this time, they miss this time of gaming, they miss transit, they miss the beginning of Black Ops 2, and I think that's a good thing for transit. Now, whatever your opinions are on transit, good or bad, you gotta admit that there's some nostalgia to it, and that there were good times associated with that map, and you can still have good times if you go back and you just play it again. Now, I'm not trying to sway people's opinions and say that Transit is the greatest map ever made, because I don't believe that. It definitely has problems. But I think from what we have and over the time, time that it's been around and what we got, I feel like you can be content with it and almost see the positive sides of it and see why some people enjoy it. And overall, I feel like you can have a good time. So Transit, in, in my opinion, it's a positive. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I'm probably going to do this with a couple other maps. I want to do one about Zetsubo Noshima particularly and Moon, two of my favorite zombies maps. I know, crazy to hear that because a lot of people don't like Zetsubo and I'll never understand why. And a lot of people don't like Moon. I didn't really realize that until recently. Moon's actually my favorite zombies map. And uh, apparently people don't like that map that much. So we're going to talk about those maps in some later episodes. But yeah, here has been my views and my, I guess, analysis of transit. I don't know, I, it's not trying to be really of an essay video, just trying to be, um, I guess, shed some light and give some positivity toward transit, because I don't feel like it gets it enough. So, thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you later. I've been wishing for some better days Could you listen, no way Can you stay? So mine, but it don't matter. He's got more time for the lover to arrive. If he's still alive, he could be revived, but he's dead inside. And he said it's fine. What a lovely lie that he lied.